In this video, we'll be crafting the elven themed gauntlets as we continue to build towards the full suit of armor. In our previous videos, we crafted the helmet and the scale skirting. The patterns and additional advanced lessons for this suit are available at the Prince Armory Academy. If you're cutting the patterns by hand, just print the patterns with your PDF reader of choice, trace the parts, and cut normally. These gauntlets do have numerous small and delicate pieces, which makes it a perfect project for laser cutting, and the patterns do come with vector files that can be used with any laser cutter, which is convenient because this video is sponsored by Creality. I'll be setting up and using their new Falcon 2 40 watt laser engraver and cutter for this build. The Falcon 2 comes well packed, and the frame is pre-assembled, which is a big plus. It comes with an air assist and some other useful accessories. Setting up the device was very quick and easy. The optional honeycomb and aluminum plate is a great addition to protect your work surface. The working area is 400 by 415 millimeters. I'll be using its cutting functions here, but it also has a 25,000 millimeters per minute engraving speed. It also has some additional safety features like an emergency stop, an auto shut off with a fire sensor, and an active stop function in case of accidental tilt or drop. I'm pulling out some 5 to 6 ounce vegetable tan leather for the finger parts. You can use up to 9 to 10 ounce leather for this if you prefer. I'll start by using Lightburn's test grid to have the laser cut out a pattern of test cuts at varying speeds and powers. Then I can pick out the most efficient cutting and engraving setting. Be sure to protect your eyes with the included glasses. The first layer will be a lower power cut to make some decorative lines. Next it will run the cut lines at a higher power and a lower speed. Needless to say, this process calls for good ventilation. For the sake of the video and filming everything, I'm running things inside, but I'm also using a respirator, and I have the room isolated, and I have a big fan blowing out the door. Having said that, Creality does offer an enclosure that's very affordable, with a fan and exhaust hose that you can run outside, and that will help manage the smoke a lot. I was very impressed with the Creality Falcon 2 laser engraver. I believe they have a sale in progress now, so I'll leave a link below. Next I'll do a test cut with some 4 ounce chrome tan leather to make the finger backings. This is what the finger scales will attach to, and it's soft, so it will allow for flexibility. For the larger pieces I'm using some thicker 10 to 11 ounce Herman Oak vegetable tan leather. Here again the first cut layer is for the decorative lines. If you plan to carve and tool the decorative lines, I do suggest picking a very low setting. It should barely be visible. I picked a setting that's a little bit too high, and it made the carving more difficult than it needed to be. But if you don't plan to carve it and want the laser line to be the decoration, picking a higher setting is fine. This thick and dense leather normally proves to be quite a challenge for smaller laser cutters, but this Falcon 2 didn't even break a sweat. Not only that, the cut lines were incredibly sharp and clean. This device is just as powerful as many of the popular desktop style laser cutter models, and it's a fraction of the price. I think this device is going to be a game changer for people who are wanting to get into laser cutting, but the price of conventional units were out of reach. I do think that devices like these should be leveraged by artists to speed up their workflows, giving them more time for the finer details. When you're trying to do this type of work as a business, every bit of efficiency helps. Now that we've got the pieces cut, we can start decorating them to our preference. If you plan to carve and tool a piece, find a plastic bin that you can put some water in. Dunk each piece for a few seconds. Set them aside for a bit to let the water wick into the leather. When the lighter color starts to return to the surface, you should be pretty close to an ideal sweet spot for carving and working the leather. I like to use a swivel knife with a ceramic blade from Slice Tools to carve my main lines. Be sure to strop your swivel knife regularly to help the blade glide smoothly through the leather. Just a reminder, this Elvin series is one of our advanced projects at the Prince Armory Academy. If the tooling or other steps look overwhelming, I suggest that you look at the Fantasy and Warrior Armor series builds, with tutorials which are meant to prepare you for the more intricate projects like this while still being fun and rewarding to make on their own.
When it comes to tooling, you do have many options. One of the main types of tools that you'll use over and over are bevelers. This is how you will add shape and depth to your carved lines. I would suggest checking out some of these angled bevelers from Weaver Leather Supply. They have several sizes to pick from, depending on the radius of your curve you're working on. The rule of thumb is to use the widest beveler you can and reduce the width for tighter curves. If you want to learn more about tooling, and the more intricate examples featured in the helmet, there is a comprehensive tooling series that exclusively comes with the Elven Bundle. I'll also be giving the edges a slight texture. There are many options here, but this is what I've chosen for this theme. I'll stamp firmly along the edges. Then I'll do a light pass to blend the edges. Then I'll use an edge beveler to round over the edges. And a hand burnisher to smooth the edges further. You should take the wrist pieces and slightly bend them at this stage. The knuckle plate should also be wet molded a little bit. You can use a handle or other rounded object to dish each knuckle slightly. For the decorative cuff overlays, I beveled the border lines and now I'm adding a texture inside the borders and around the ornamental details. I'll give the piece just a little bit of subtle shape by lifting the feather details. The thumb piece should also be dished out slightly. Now we can dye the parts. The liquid products used in leather craft are very messy, so I like to use these plastic planter trays to control the mess. I'm using Green Angelus leather dye for the Elven projects as a base color. For the smaller parts, I will simply dip them into the container and set them to dry. For the larger pieces, I'll use a piece of synthetic sponge to apply the dye. To seal the pieces and firm up the leather, I'll be using a heavy coat of Weaver's Clear Tough Coat. You can dip the small parts into the finish. Just be sure to tin the pieces as they dry to avoid runs and blotches. It helps if you smooth the finish as you go too. For the larger pieces you can use a sponge, or I also like to use a blue shop towel. This type of towel helps smooth the finish while you're applying it, and can be used to touch up the finish.
Now we can move on to the painting stages. I'll mostly be using Jacquard Lumiere paints for this project. For the base layer, I'm using metallic olive green. For the top layer, I'll be using metallic emerald green. And for the trim, I'll be using metallic bronze. For the antiquing, I'll be using black. I'll be using a sponge to apply the base layer. I use a paper plate to control the paint load in the sponge. I don't want to fill in all of the details with globs of paint, so I'll dab the sponge onto the plate until it's not as thick. I'm going for a light but consistent coat. Good paints make a big difference here. To apply the top coat, I'll be using a piece of sponge that I tear off the edges. I'm going for a more irregular textured look here, and I'll be trying to leave a bit of the base layer showing through. This will add some visual depth to the colors. This is a slightly simplified technique compared to the helmet, and should be considered a stepping stone to the more advanced techniques. The advanced lessons will be included with the pattern bundle. Ashley will take over painting for the metallic trim. First, she will paint the bronze details. It'll be up to you if you want to paint the trim on each piece, or go a different route. For the silver trim, we like to use Molotov for its highly reflective luster. Now we can finally move on to the assembly. I'll start with the fingers. I'll be using small double capped rivets, and this part can be tricky because even the small rivets are often too long for connecting two thin pieces of leather like this. If anyone knows any small rivets that have shorter posts, but not an excessively small cap, please comment below and let me know. What makes it tricky is that the posts like to skew off center when setting them if their length is too long. The workaround I like to use for this type of scenario is to just use a small hammer and to just take my time using numerous lightweight taps where I can feel if I'm hitting dead on and easily correct my strikes as I set up. The tabs on the sides are the finger loops. The extra holes will allow you to adjust each band to perfectly fit each finger. You'll want to keep track of which finger goes where once you fit it. The bands in this prototype ended up being a little bit too small, so after this video goes up, I'll make and include a larger version of these in case you want to wear these with gloves. You could also simply use some additional strips of leather to extend them as well. To set the rivet on the finger bands, you'll need something like a small horn anvil or find a small piece of metal that you can use instead. This anvil I have is very affordable, and I purchased it from Weaver many years ago, and I use this small anvil all the time in my leather projects. Give each piece a little bit of a bend along its length as they are assembled to better fit the finger. The thumb is basically the same process as the finger parts. Just notice that the scales are a bit bigger and ascend in size from the tip. We'll come back to the thumb in a minute. Next we need to assemble the gauntlet base. I'm using medium double capped rivets to connect the decorative overlay to the cuff. This goes together with four rivets. It's not load bearing so this should be fine, but you could also increase the number of rivets or use Chicago screws if you want to toughen it up a bit. I'm going to use a single line 24 snap for the cuff closure. In my case, this will only ever be used for demonstration and display. But if you expect more rugged use, consider using buckles or more snaps or other latching mechanisms.
You can bend the leather to soften it up a bit so that the snap doesn't pop off too easily by itself. I'm using quarter inch Chicago screws to connect each finger to the knuckle plate. Not including the thumb, there are three different finger sizes. The middle finger is the longest one, the little finger, you guessed it, is the smallest one, and the index and ring finger are the medium sized ones. These are interchangeable. I'll continue the assembly with Chicago screws along the wrist pieces. You must glue or thread lock all of the screw posts or they definitely will work themselves free over time. At the base of the wrist, I'll connect the tab that will join to the thumb. There is a little bit of wiggle room here, and you can punch the hole in the thumb piece wherever you need it for your hand size. You can also relocate the tab to a different Chicago screw if necessary. Just do a test fit and see how it functions before you commit to the hole placement on the thumb. If you would like to pick up any of the tools and materials used in this video, please be sure to visit Weaver Leather Supply as they are a supporter of this channel and I've been a long time customer and can vouch for the quality of their products. Check out the affiliate link below. You can spot Skype any inner areas that might conflict or bind when articulating. And finally, we can attach the hand with the cuff. You can proportionately scale these patterns up or down to get the best fit possible. I suggest making at least one paper mock-up before committing materials to the project just to be sure. The Alvin chest and shoulders will probably be coming next in this series, as well as some more parts for the Berserker series real soon. So if you're not subscribed, please do so now and like the video if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.